All right, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Uh, today is Wednesday, July the 14th, 2021, and wow, do we ever have a lot to cover. I know a couple days ago there was quite a bit to cover, and some of that is following up on those stories. With that being said, there's also a very significant amount of new news as well, with some tidbits of, uh, I guess you could say, some entertainment in there. So I, I figured I'd just change it up and start today with that. So first off, um, Mel Gibson uh, saluted uh, former president Donald Trump at a UFC match in Las Vegas. Now, the reason why that made the news was because, again, Mel Gibson has been quite controversial for some of the remarks he said in the past, as I don't feel I need to repeat for the vast majority of you, you know, his um, leaked phone call tapes and things like that, and people saying, you know, why would he salute uh, a quote-unquote disgraced president? Well, again, depends who you listen to, depends which outlet you listen to, right? So at the same time, Look, if it's a free country. If he wants to salute the former president, so be it, right? I'm really not trying to um, take a side here, if you will, but I also understand why certain people would not want to salute him if maybe, you know, Trump uh, enacted certain policies or certain things that affected a community or what have you. But again, it's a celebrity basically saluting another celebrity. Honestly, at this point, that's what it is. So anyways, the next thing is that Amazon has acquired Facebook's entire internet satellite team as it plans to provide internet to unserved parts of the world. Yeah, so this is going to be quite interesting. And the reason why I say that is because, again... It, I don't see any good intentions here. Now, yes, on the front end, in the, I guess you could say, the short-sighted perspective, will Amazon obviously provide internet to certain parts of the world where certain countries don't allow it or where, you know, it's just not available because of how unfortunately poor and um, malnourished certain countries are f um, with regards to many different resources. Uh, look, short term, I guess it'll be good because it'll bring internet to those who don't have it. But at the same time, I can't help but think what's the bigger plan here, right? What's the, what's the 5, 10, 15, 20, even 50 year plan that Amazon has? Again, they, they got a plan for everything, not just Amazon, these companies we all know, right? So the next thing is that 160 more unmarked graves were found in Canada in a British Columbia residential school that was run by the Catholic Church um, up until I believe the mid 70s or mid 80s, if I'm not mistaken, regarding Regardless, though, look, again, this is another mass grave. The fact that it, this is how unfortunate it is people have become to the media all around the world, not just in the West. The, the desensitivity to all of this is insane because, yes, of course, the first day, you know, you have a, the, the first set of, um, uh, very unfortunately, the unmarked graves discovered. Then you have a second set and then you have a third set and then maybe um, it's unfortunate, but we may find more. And at this point, people are not really caring anymore, at least on a global level, if you will, because, again, it's it just becomes after a certain number of stories are printed based on, you know, more findings. It's very unfortunate. I hate to use this phrase, but sometimes we got to call it like it really is. It goes from a tragedy to a statistic, and it's so unfortunate, but it is true. With that being said, though, I'm not trying to say that the, the whole world has just ignored this entirely, right? The, there are vast amounts of people, and rightfully so, paying attention to this as they should. I'm just saying I think more people should be paying attention. Notice, again, how the first two times that unmarked uh, graves were found in Canada, it was in the top three most read stories around the world for websites like the BBC, um, Al Jazeera, global sites, and things like that. Now that they find more, it's not there. It's not there. Just, it, it's, just, it's, it, it's nobody's fault. It's just the people aren't reading it because they say, oh my god, look, they found more in Canada. They're just going to keep finding them. And it's, it's terrible. It really is. But anyways, the next thing is that uh, the George Floyd mural got hit with a lightning strike at roughly 4.30 a.m., I believe, Eastern Standard Time this morning. Um, I believe there was some street cameras and witnesses that did see this happen, so there really is nobody to blame. Uh, with that being said, too, I think initially some people had thought, my God, the ma massive vandalism and damage until they checked out the evidence and the, you know, the events leading up to that and realized there were no events <laughs> leading up to it. It was a full-on lightning strike. So, you know, um, the next thing is that it came out yesterday that Ken Starr, who was the lawyer or the head lawyer or prosecutor, if you will, that went after Bill Clinton in the, um, the Monica Lewinsky case, actually, according to a, a new book that will be coming out next week uh, pertaining to Epstein, helped use his connections in the Bush administration to help Epstein get a good deal. Again, this book uh, seems to allege that Ken Starr is sort of like the lawyer for the elites, if you will, regardless of Republican or Democrat. He's the guy that they call in uh, when there's an emergency, they need a favor, this or that. Again, it's, uh, does it, is it any different than mobsters? 
if you if you read some of the excerpts from this book that I believe it was the Guardian who posted this article initially, do you see what they say? It's insane. It's like, man, you know, we called in Ken Starr because we needed a favor. It sounds like an organized crime. It's the same thing. Which is why, you know, when they say in the Godfather movies, when Michael Corleone says, you know, politics and crime are one in the same in the same. I mean, some people think that, you know, oh, that's not like that anymore. It's just a newer version, in my opinion. It's just a newer version, right? So, again, just because they're not paying off or bribing politicians like they used to doesn't mean that uh, corruption is gone. There's just different methods of doing it, right? Sometimes actions themselves become the form of communication or language, if you know what I mean, when it comes to bribery and things like that. Sometimes words don't need to be spoken. The, ac the actions dictate the words, right? And we see that too militarily around the world, around the globe, you name it. Anyways, the next thing, and this is probably going to be the final part of uh, entertainment before I get into the more serious stuff, is that Deadpool is now part of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So that's that's pretty cool for those that are superhero fans. I know uh, we've all been waiting for that for a while. So anyways, the next thing is that the British defense minister said that the UK will work with the Taliban if they take over power or if they take full power in Afghanistan. Look, I can't help but think that they this is a coordinated effort on behalf of, I guess you could say, the United States and you name it. Because in my personal opinion, unless I'm missing context here, the U.S. cannot blatantly come out and say, listen, we're going to help with the Taliban because, you know, it goes against so many different opposing narratives and things like that that are mainly conflictually based within America, if you will, a little bit disseminated into Canada. But the point is, is that it seems as though I can't help but think that, again, look at the alliance between the British monarchy and the Americans and the Israelis. It's extremely tight. I can't help but think behind the scenes they sat down and they said okay you know uh, Britain is going to make the announcement this time around for a multitude of reasons right could have been a win-win it could have been you know you do this for me I'll do this for you again these agencies work together all the time I just cannot help but think that the British defense minister would not have said this unless there was approval from the U.S. or not even approval but agreement from the U.S. if you will right the next thing is that four Iranian intelligence officials have been charged with plotting to kidnap a New York-based journalist critical of Iran, U.S. prosecutors say. The indictment did, did not name the target, but Masi Alinajad, I, I'm really, Alin, Alinhad, Alinjad, I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce this. Um, she is an uh, Iranian-American author and activist. Uh, activist. She says it was her. Uh, the conspirators, who all live in Iran and remain at large, also allegedly plotted to lure a person in the UK and three others in Canada to Iran. Um, Iran's government said the allegations were, quote, ridiculous and baseless, end quote. Again, typical intelligence operation. It just goes to show you how more how much more real this is getting in terms of back in the day uh, you know what folks I, I just want to say very quickly the parallel between organized crime and the intelligence communities is insane and what do i mean by that i'm talking about the mindset of these people in the sense that back in the day in organized crime yes it did happen innocent people would get caught in the crossfire but cr they the criminals i'm not trying to you know talk them up if you will but they were at least more careful back then these certain uh, a good chunk of these criminals had rules you know they don't um, assassinate the person in front of their wife and kids if they're out for dinner and things like this they would call off the the assassination if that was the case that's not the case any longer the cartels and all these other crime groups nowadays they, the you know the, the Italians the Russians nowadays they just they kill you and your family they, they don't care about casualties I can't help but think it's the same type of parallel within the intelligence community before it used to be like okay we had sort of you know morals and etiquette if you will and it was just unwritten rules amongst different intelligence communities now it's just ruthless right and i give case in point here before it was like okay intelligence assets didn't kill journalists unless they really needed to now it's more like they kill journalists at a whim they don't care just yeah take them out you know what i mean i'm not saying it never occurred before i'm just saying it was far less i guess you could say sought after or approved back then nowadays it seems to be much more let's just resort right to the murders right to the killing you know let's just let's do these ruthless operations much more directly let's not be as covert about it because who gives a shit We're, no one's gonna you know it's not gonna be traced back to us anyways and if it sort of is then prove it you know what I mean? So anyways, the next thing is that at least 72 people have been killed, hundreds arrested, and countless properties looted so far in the spiraling unrest in South Africa, which was, of course, triggered by the jailing of former President Jacob Zuma. There are also um, allegedly mass food and fuel shortages. Look, again, I if... 
I don't know the specific politics about ex-president Zuma being jailed and things like that. However, I do want to say, from an external point of view, and many of you folks know, unless we're on the ground ourselves, I don't really like to make a solidified, you know, statement or conclusion. I always have, I'm always open to having my perspective changed if there's, you know, new, um, new incidences or new areas of context that I wasn't aware of earlier. With that being said, if people are rioting this badly because they're that upset, I mean, I'm not saying let Zuma go, but at the same time, if this is destroying the country... I mean, for the sake of just the infrastructure and the people and, and civility, maybe just, you know, have a judge say, okay, fine, we're not going to put him in yet. But I also understand the other side of the debate as well, which is that, you know, if you cave into the people, then what does that say about the system and the rule of law? It's a fine balance. And I sadly don't have the answer, folks. And I'm being totally honest with you. And this is a both sides have very valid points. They really do, because one side is arguing if we let him, if we let Zuma go for a bit to calm down the, re the people in the country, does that mean that, you know, if the people get violent enough that the rule of law doesn't mean anything anymore? Right. It's it's that sort of anarchist, you know, the people can govern themselves themselves versus you know what i mean right so so we'll, we'll see what happens and as you know folks i hate to say we'll see what happens but again you know unfortunately we're gonna have to see hour by hour how this plays out the next thing is that the united states now this is interesting the united states um should accommodate uh millions of refugees who will be forced to flee effects of of a climate change according to a study by the george soros funded refugees international advocacy group um Okay. I mean, look, again, this just goes to show you, if that's the case, then let's see what happens with the people having to immigrate in a, at a mass scale. I mean, it's been said many times before, the climate situation or the climate scenario is going to be the next big thing, whether it's legitimate or not, is not the point. It's just It just shows that it's going to be pushed into the, I guess you could say, the apparatus of the dissemination of propaganda amongst the, the elites and the mainstream media, right? The next thing is that Bolsonaro has been admitted to the hospital uh, for persistent hiccups. Um, okay. Uh, again, it, it seems to be chronic hiccups. I don't know what that could lead to. Again, I'm not a doctor. I don't claim to pretend to know things that I don't, or um, at least I try my best not to. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, look, we'll see what happens. The headline sounds scarier than it may be, or maybe the headline is not as scary as it should be. That's the thing about news reporting in general, right? Sometimes even when it's reported in an unbiased way, could it be a small case of the hiccups and he'll be out of it by out of the hospital by tonight or tomorrow? Or will this be far more intense? That, that, that That's the other thing too, right? So um, we will see what happens. I guess I would imagine because of people's perspectives and political views on the man, half the country is happy he's in the hospital, the other half isn't. But again, we should not wish, you know, uh, um, ill uh, ill sickness or bad ill will on people, right? So uh, the next thing is that the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson uh, announces football bans for online racists, saying, and I quote, if you are guilty of racist abuse online of footballers, then you will not be going to the match. No ifs, no buts, no exemptions, and no excuses, end quote. So this comes after the, you know, the massive abuse having to do with, you know, the kneeling at the England versus Italy game. You know, a handful of uh, players of color had missed the penalty shots against uh, Italy, which I believe is what, if I'm not mistaken, is what caused uh, Italy to win and England to lose. Again, the British are very passionate, passionate about their sports, as are many other cultures around the world. But uh, again, there comes a point where some of these soccer players, from my understanding, were receiving thousands, if not millions, of comments of death threats to the point where they couldn't check their phone or at least their social media without seeing these threats. Now, again, for me, very simple. Uh, I'm not trying to, you know, make it seem easier than it is, but turn your phone off, don't check your social media, right? At the same time, though, you know, people should not be doing this. However, it's, again, it's a fine line because, you know, there's the whole thing of freedom of speech. But then at the same time, the question becomes within the respects of the UK's laws and boundaries, does that freedom of speech cover harassment, abuse, things like this? It's not for me to say. I don't live in the UK. Where I um, am not on the ground. I think many of you listening or watching this are not on the ground yourselves. I think some of you are, which I would appreciate some of you coming forward to see what the energy is like on the ground in England, uh, in the UK, what the feelings are, what people are saying compared to what the media is saying, right? So when I when I see these things, I mean, you know, it, it's unfortunate. It, to me, it's just back and forth bickering when I honestly think we should be focusing on the external, not just threats, but the external potential, I guess you could say, advances we could be making, not just as a as a nation or a set of nations, but as a species, right? But again, that's the that's the whole hypothetical kumbaya, everyone's happy by by the fire thing, right? So um, the next thing is that petitioners in a lawsuit organized by the uh, voters of Georgia, uh, voter GA, um, 
to inspect the Fulton County, Georgia ballots have added stunning claims. Uh, this is according to Disclose TV, and I quote, the error reporting rate in Fulton's hand count audit is a whopping 60%, end quote, with a link to the article, um, VoterGA.org. Again, I, if, if this is the case, again, if there is fraud, and I got to be careful because of YouTube, but at the same time, I'm going to say it like it is too in this particular instance. If there's fraud, we got to call it like it is, right? So again, uh, Biden made a statement saying that I think that... Um, uh, he called Trump's claims a big lie, uh, if you will. And look, folks, I've been, I haven't been trying to dodge that, but I'll be honest. I want to see what the audits bring. Very simple. So, um, the next thing is that uh, Fauci has called for mandated vaccines at the local level. Uh, I, I don't look. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop covering what this guy says at some point because I don't think anyone even listens to him that much anymore. Um, obviously, except for the people that watch mainstream media, which is fine. I'm not trying to criticize, but you know. Um, the next thing is that the United States has actually said that they will not be accepting any, uh, I guess you could say, Cuban refugees, if you will, and I got to be honest with you, folks. I find this quite peculiar, mainly because a lot of people are pointing the fact out that pointing the fact pointing out the fact that, excuse me, the Biden administration is, is saying they will not take in any Cuban refugees because Cubans tend to overwhelmingly vote Republican. Now, again, I, I'm inclined to have to factor this into to my perspective, right? We got to factor this in. It's unfortunate. In pure theory, this should not be happening, you know, it, where administrations incorporate political views and, and political motives, narratives, and they, they can, they're concerned more about the optics of things. But again, this is unfortunately the reality of the world. Are they saying they won't take Cubans because, uh, you know, they... Um, the United States does not want to see an overwhelming support for Republicans in the midterms or the 2024 election. Um, or sorry, 20, yeah, 2024 election. I don't know, guys. I want to say no. I want to say that, you know, these, I'm not saying Democrats or Republicans. I'm just saying these politicians in Europe, in North America, I want to say they have better morals than that, but they don't. And we know that, right? So, I mean, look, I'm, I'm a glass half full kind of guy. But in this case, this just seems to be the the sort of old school mentality of trying to push that Cuban propaganda about communism and things like that going. But it's not. You know what I mean? It's just like it, no one cares anymore. And I think people are just tired. They know that it was propaganda. I mean, the evidence is there. So anyways, um, the next thing is that uh, a handgun ban for adults under 21 is uh, unconstitutional, rules the U.S. federal court. And I quote, uh, Judge Richardson said this, Our nation's most cherished constitutional rights vest no later than 18, and the Second Amendment's right to keep and bear arms is no different. End quote. Again, the judge made a ruling and that's it. There's some people that say this is not right. And again, we go through the legal process. You want to appeal it, so be it. Then we'll see what happens. Um, but as of right now, this ruling stands. Second Amendment, I, many of you know in my personal opinion, and I tend to be very, I guess you could say, um, um, agreeing, agreeing with the, the Second Amendment. I tend to agree with it quite strongly, uh, personally. But anyways, the next thing is that in a public address to the nation, uh, President Macron made clear that only those who have taken the vaccine can prove recent history from a, a COVID or a negative test result will be allowed to enter uh, the venues. In addition to hospitals, bars, cafes, and tourist attractions, he also made an, an announcement that COVID vaccines will be mandatory in a, uh, for healthcare workers. And he said uh, down the road in a short period of time, uh, this this is not word for word, but he said, he goes, we may have to consider vaccines for all French citizens. Now, what has that led to? That has led to Greece doing the same thing with their healthcare workers. I don't think Greece has said anything about mandating it for your, the everyday citizen. However, this has already caused outrage in, um, amongst the people in France. There are people protesting like crazy right now, and they are chanting liberté in French. I believe that means freedom, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Please don't quote me on that, but it seems to resemble the word liberty just off the top of my head. So, uh, again, the people don't want this. It's very clear. Or maybe a good chunk of them don't. And, again, this has to do with the, the, the core question. What do you do with the people? Just like Jordan Peterson asked when he went on Bill Maher a few years ago before COVID, um, you know, with what do you do with the people that support Trump and the people that don't? Because clearly it's polarizing, just like with COVID. What do you do with the people that want to get a vaccine and the people that don't? What do you, how do you deal with them? How do you find an appropriate middle ground? Or can you? That, that's what it comes down to, right? So the next thing is that, um, let's take a look here. Uh, former U.S. Attorney William McSwain has announced he is running for governor of Pennsylvania. He sent a letter to Trump saying former Attorney General Bill Barr ordered him not to investigate election irregularities in the 2020 elections. Now, allegedly, um, 
th this is because Bill Barr felt there was no validity to the to the fraud claim, saying that it was all BS and things like that. Apparently, some of these claims have also come out in books, and it, there will be more coming out soon as well. Again, folks, I'll be totally honest with you. If he thinks there's no fraud and he directed that he had the ability to direct, um, let's see, Mr. Uh, Governor, uh, sorry, um, William McSwain here, then again, if he's telling the truth to Trump, then we will see how that unravels. Knowing Trump, he'll probably attack Barr, but we'll see, right? I, I think he's already attacked Barr, if I'm not mistaken, but... But yeah, anyway, so we'll um, we'll see what happens there. The uh, next thing is that, let's take a look here. Texas Democrats have started singing, and I quote, We shall overcome during their press conference in Washington, D.C. after leaving the state of Texas to prevent a quorum on an election integrity bill. They're saying that it has to do with restricting, again, this is the big debate, Repu Republicans saying this just enforces mo more voter IDs, and then the, the Democrats are saying this is rest um this is strengthening and making it much more difficult for people of color to vote. So basically non-white people to vote, right? So again, what did these Democrats in Texas do? They went to Washington, D.C. to protest. And um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the Texas, um, I guess you could say quorum or the commit the Congress there, or let me see here. Uh, oh, sorry, Greg Abbott himself, excuse me, the governor, uh, pardon me, everyone, um, said law enforcement will arrest Democratic lawmakers when they return to Texas in a procedure unanimously outlined and agreed to by House members. They would return to the Capitol effectively, effectively forced to maintain quorum, end quote. So basically, if any of you have seen House of Cards, when Frank Underwood is the vice president and he's holding a quorum in the Senate, the Democrats protested it by not attending. He ordered the sergeant of arms in the, in the House to uh, literally physically handcuff them, pick them up and bring them in. And I believe that that's happened quite a handful of times in America's past, and it seems to be happening again. So again, I understand why the these Democrats left the state out of protest. I understand that. But again, they're going to have to go back home eventually. And I mean, I, I don't know how seriously the police who, who are going to detain them or the sergeant in, in arms is taking this, but who knows, right? If they're taking their job seriously or if this is a bit of a joke and they kind of laugh about it. I, I don't know. This is the thing, right? I don't know. It, it's... It's kind of scary when we're on the fine line of, you know, living in a George Orwell world versus uh, a 1984 world versus, you know, it sounds tough on paper, but in, in reality, it doesn't translate. And that's the unfortunate thing, which is scary, too, because you'd like to think there, there would be strict enforcement. But again, depends on which way it's leaning, depends on the perspective. This is the issue, right? So anyways, the uh, next thing is that... Uh, the armed forces in Germany announced a new space command. Um, I guess you could say a space force, if you will. Again, not a coincidence. We covered this, I think, in the Let's Get Banned episode yesterday very quickly, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, um, the next thing is that the FBI used at least 12 informants, but they put uh, disclosed TV, put that in air quotes, in the alleged plot to kidnap uh, Mission Governor uh, Gretchen Whitmer, according to a new filing in federal court. A defense attorney said they will argue that the FBI induced or persuaded the defense uh, to go along with the kidnap scheme, end quote. Yeah, again, um, this is the thing. The FBI and the CIA in the past have been known for using manipulative tactics to get a certain outcome that they've wanted. We've seen that with, very recently, Julian Assange, right? The people, the, the, the Julian Assange's key witness w was not even a witness, and you look at the guy's history, mental health issues, things like that, he's not reliable. But again, the State Department turns a blind eye when it's in their favor, and when it's not, you see how they manipulate things, right? With that being said, I'm not saying that pertains to this particular case of Gretchen Whitmer. I'm just saying more specifically, this pertains to the way in which we should question the FBI's tactics and what have you, right? So again, it's it's hard to say, right? But We'll, we'll see what comes of this. The next thing is that Venezuela has arrested Freddy Guevara, the opposition politician for terrorism and treason. The arrest came as unidentified armed men threatened opposition leader Juan Guaido, or yeah, Guaido, I hope I said his name, cor name correctly, in the car park, um, the car parking lot next to his home, end quote. Yeah, look, you can't be running the country like you're a mobster. I know that, again, some people might say, okay, what's wrong with that? You know, Kim Jong-un does it, right? But again... Uh, this is, it's unfortunate to see because, you know, like I said, folks, like I always say, the ones who suffer the most are the people, right? So, um, the next thing is that the U.S. has imposed restrictions on 100 Nicaraguan officials, it says, are involved in government crackdown and rights abuses. Again, it depends it, how you define this. Is it a crackdown or is it just like a, a smear attack to take out your opponents? 
so it's hard to say. Um, the next thing is that France has fined Google $593 million over the use of publishers' content under European Union copyright rules. The U.S. tech giant faces additional fines of up to $1 million per day if it does not comply within the next two months. These are the type of numbers I'd like to see certain countries, uh, you know, holding big tech accountable in. But again, the question is, are they hold, holding them accountable in the right areas? Again, my, this goes back to the point of what I said a couple days ago pertaining to YouTube being fined 100,000 euros, right? I would like to see more numbers like this, more like 10 million, 100 million, things like that, uh, and then a million a day until you comply. Because again, this is what big tech is doing to us. I'll be honest with you, for once, it kind of seems like, you know, we can kind of you know, get, get them, get them back very loosely. But I, even then I, I question myself when I say that. Um, the next thing is that the, uh, let's take a look here. Yash Paul Sharma, the second highest run getter for India at the 1983 cricket tournament has died at age eight, at age 66 of a heart attack. It's unfortunate, right? Uh, very unfortunate to hear because uh, 66 i mean that's you still got a quite a life to live at that age right so may he rest in peace uh, the next thing is that a veteran nepali politician has been appointed prime minister for the fifth time after the top court reinstated parliament again at least there's some sort of semblance some sort of cog which stands for continuity of government some sort of fluidity if you will right um the next thing is that uh, according to a senior leader of the taliban uh, they don't want fighting within afghan cities yeah, again, this is why I'm saying unless we're on the ground, it's hard to say what certain factions of the Taliban want, what the meat compared to what the media is pushing compared to what everyday people in Afghanistan want as well. Right. Uh, the next thing is that photographs of more than 80 Muslim women uh, put up for sale on an app in India are triggering outrage and calls for action. Yeah, no, duh. No, duh. They're selling women on an app. That's insane. I don't even know how much I can I can talk about this. But anyways. Um, the next thing is that uh, a UN Human Rights Council has approved a resolution calling for, quote, swift withdrawal of Eritrean troops, end quote, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, from Ethiopian, uh, the Ethiopian region. Okay, again, I don't know specifics, the military strategy, the conflict, what's really, what's true, then what's truly going on behind the scenes. So let's, let's uh, see what happens there. Or if there will be any uh, revelation after that, or if this was a basic withdrawal, and that's about it. The next thing is that Turkey's Erdogan and new Israeli President Herzog have spoken on the phone in a sign of possible thaw after years of strained ties. Um, it could be that maybe Erdogan and Netanyahu were not willing to get along or among certain things, or there there were just certain personal tensions that affected the pol the geopolitical relationships that maybe. Um, I guess we could say the new pr president and prime minister of Israel could factor in, if you will, right? But again, if uh, Netanyahu gets back in in a couple years, which is very possible because Israeli politics works very differently than American, then, you know, it it's going to it'll be back to some different tactics, if you will. So the next thing is that death sentences within the country of Bahrain have surged more than 600 percent in the past decade. A new report finds. Yeah, again, well, here's the thing. When it comes to death sentences, I'll be honest with you folks, when it comes to death sentences, I, my whole position on that is if the people within a particular region or country are okay with it and they believe that is the appropriate way to punish someone who's done, who's been rightfully convicted of committing a crime, a bad crime, a very, very bad one, then so be it. It's not for me to jump in and say what you should or should not do. Right. That's my personal opinion. However, if again, if the people disagree, but the regime themselves or the government themselves are totally going against what the people want. Very different story as per usual. Um, the next thing is that uh, Guo. Guan, oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, a Chinese man has been reunited with his son after a 24 year search that saw him travel over 500,000 kilometers, which if you convert it into miles is just over 300,000 miles on a motorbike across the country. Um, his son had been snatched um, at the age of two by human traffickers in front of their home in the province of Shandong. Wow, that's wow, wow, wow. That's great. You spend 25 years of your life looking for your kid and, and they're alive and you find them. Wow, that's amazing. I, seriously, that really, I mean, again, many of you who listen and watch this show, I'm sh I, I believe have kids. I mean, uh, 
not trying to give the example of your kids, but again, you can't can't help but uh, but want to be able to relate, right? So it's it's a beautiful thing. Um, the ne- uh, the final thing, actually, let's see here, is that um, okay? There was an Afghan migrant stabbed to death by an African suspect in France. Oh man, that's a shitty way to end this episode. Sorry, guys. I, I thought I would uh, was gonna end this with another little bit of a happy story, but you know. Anyways, with that being said, we got a lot more content coming out in the coming days, as per usual. Thanks for listening. I know that there was not a crack in yesterday. I just wanted to focus more on real world events on Let's Get Banned, which is why uh, today's episode is going to be uh, substantially longer. So with that being said, folks, thank you so, so much for watching and we'll catch all of you very, very soon. Cheers.